so in the previous session we understood normal force and uh, we know that normal force is one type of contact force now the another type of contact force is friction it is very common uh, uh, term and we come across friction on a day to day basis the wear and tear the writing which you are doing on the paper right now or uh, your you know sole of the shoe is going you know uh, are getting torn or let's say when you are rubbing your hand against a wall then it gets rubbed up so you know when you 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 talk about friction quite often so what is friction force is what is the point of discussion today so friction is a type of contact force which acts between two surfaces in contact right so you cannot imagine friction between two surfaces which are not in contact for example uh, you know uh, a wall on one side and the wall on the other side of your room if they are not in contact they are not rubbing against each other there is no friction so if if you have two you know two hands in air separated there will not be friction so when you rub the hands against each other you feel that heat so hence only when the two palms come in contact when you apply some force and then uh, the friction resist your movement of the palm and because of that resistance some heat is generated and you you know feel that warmth right so first thing is when two objects are in contact only then you can expect friction to be there now it acts always along the surface is surface in contact so we are going to discuss all of them one by one but always remember friction is uh, friction will be applied when two surfaces in co contact acts along the surface and not that just because two objects are in contact they will experience friction in between them no so for example a book lying idle on a horizontal table will not experience any friction whatsoever so another criteria for the friction to exist is it must or it it will be there only when the two surfaces are in contact or uh, and then secondly it they must have a tendency to move relative to each other what is related to each other so let's say if you are having a table of sorts table is there and there is something some object over there so the object must move with respect to the table that means someone sitting on the table must observe that the object is moving that is called relative motion you studied in the previous chapter motion so only when there is a relative motion between two surfaces in contact they will feel friction or they will experience friction so either they are moving relatively to each other or they have tendency of relative motion so what does tendency of relative motion mean so tendency of relative motion is uh, that let's say you would you would see a ramp and there is a book kept over there and uh, this is at an angle let's say theta with horizontal okay so there is a ramp inclined plane okay so there is an inclined plane on which something some book is kept and it is not slipping or it is not sliding down the ramp it is static over there so it doesn't mean that there is no friction in between the two objects just because they are stationary there is a great tendency of this book to go down like this so hence this is called tendency of relative motion so it is not moving but it given a chance it will start moving just like that so that is called tendency of relative motion so wherever there is motion relative motion or there is tendency of relative motion friction will appear over there now it depends on the roughness of the surfaces in contact higher the roughness higher is the friction you know that right so you would have seen carpenters using sandpaper so different sandpapers are there with different coarseness so hence let's say more the uh, uh, rough surface harder friction it will be applying on the surface on which the sandpaper is applied okay now it also depends on the normal force acting between the surfaces right so higher the normal force between the surface higher will be the friction what does it mean so let's say this is the inclined plane this is the book over there we just learned that whenever there will be two surfaces in contact there will be forces so there is a normal force acting uh, acting on the book by the let's say inclined plane then the friction acting here let's say this is the friction acting here this will be directly proportional to the normal force so higher the normal higher will be the friction okay now it is responsible for wear and tear of uh, surfaces in contact and and friction can support or oppose the motion both it's not necessary that friction always will oppose uh, you know uh, always oppose the motion the only thing is 
friction always opposes relative motion so you have to please you have to you know understand this very very subtly right so friction doesn't allow or doesn't resist all the motion in fact there will be many cases where friction actually supports the motion for example simple walking so we will show you through this diagram so you see you know people are moving you know and hence what is happening is this toe here is trying to push the ground right it is trying to slip over ground like this so the movement of the leg is like that isn't it you are trying to push the ground backward so hence what is happening you, there is some kind of rubbing going on between the foot sole and the and the uh, ground so the sole is moving in this direction with respect to the ground if you see this is let's say the ground so the sole is trying to move in this direction so what will happen the ground will try to oppose this relative motion right so friction always oppose this oppose this relative relative motion so hence it the force will be applied like this so ground is applying this force this is the force this is the direction of force applied by ground onto your foot and hence my dear friends you are able to walk so you would see that on a slippery road when there is no friction then what will happen then what will happen when you will keep trying to push the ground or you know you the the sole is rubbing against the ground but then since there is no friction so your your foot is not getting enough force back to let you move so hence in the slippery road you will fall down right so that is a common experience now uh, if you see friction is acting between the bottom surface of the block and the floor so in this case in this case if you consider this block this block when you are trying to push right so when you are trying to push the bottom surface of the block is trying to move in this direction right so the ground underneath which is there the ground underneath which is there will try to oppose this motion of the upper block and hence the lower surface of the block which i am showing like this like this is going to experience a force in this direction and hence you would you would notice when you try to push a heavy trunk it becomes very difficult to move it why because there is tremendous amount of friction which is trying to resist the motion of the block towards the right okay now let's understand few more things here so uh, you can see you know this is where the boy is slipping down the the ride right or this inclined plane so there is actual motion happening so the boy would have started slipping from here and it is and he is coming down like that so actual slipping is happening so there is actual relative motion happening so friction is trying to resist this boy from moving downwards so this is where we there is actual relative motion taking place let's take a case where motion is not there but then there is a tendency of motion so you can see lots of water droplets sticking on to the glass pane so you would have seen that in a rainy season so what is happening here if you see the the all the drops have a tendency to move down and hence you can see the shape getting created accordingly right so they have a tendency to move down but they are sticking on to that surface so what is stopping them from moving down or sliding down the surface the friction force is there which is holding them from moving down so hence there is a great tendency of the uh, uh, tendency of the water droplets to move down but the friction between them and the surface of the glass is holding the water drops from falling and hence you see if you you know if by any means the weight of the drop is more or the drop is of bigger size then even friction will not be able to hold it back and it will start dropping down so hence this is the case of tendency to move right so there is no movement actual movement but there is tendency to movement here also friction will act now let's go to the next uh, top point and this is let's try this out with you so this is the question for all of you if you are asked to slide over these surfaces which one would you prefer and why okay so this is these are the three surfaces guys this is one second third now you decide which one you would prefer to slide on obviously i know most of you would never go for these or these you will pick up this if at all you have to you know you are it is made compulsory to slide on one of them so why is that because you can see this is highest roughness right so you can see the gravel which is 
there will give you tremendous amount of roughness and hence tremendous upon tremendous amount of friction so this is relative quantity so basically if you see this is also this will also give you some resistance because this is also rough but as compared to option 1 and option 2 this you can think of would be slightly better why because the roughness here will be considerably lesser than that of a gravel filled road isn't it and this my friend will be the highest or in in if, if i have to coin a term called smoothness coefficient then this will be the most smooth surface and you will pick this up you know if at all you have to slide on these right so what do we suggest from or what do we infer from this we understand that higher the surface roughness higher will be the friction okay now next is it also depends on normal force so how why is it difficult to slide a heavier object on a rough surface as compared to a lighter object so let's take these examples right so what is this so you can see there is a huge this is the competition you know so there's a person who's trying to pull a you know a air force aircraft and you can see the the, the the effort this guy is putting so why is it so difficult to push this object and this is relatively easier to pull isn't it this cart is easier to pull simply because the normal force which the ground is applying onto the onto the object here is much higher in case of this aeroplane as compared to this cart why because you will later understand that normal force depends on how much is the weight also in in these cases right so higher the weight higher will be the normal higher will be the normal higher will be the friction force so this guy is experiencing he has to apply tremendous amount of force as compared to this person here why because the friction he offered by the ground to this object this airplane here is much much higher much much higher than in this case okay so hence again higher the normal higher will be the friction okay so understand this part as well now so uh, responsible for wear and tear you all of you know so you can see a tire surface totally worn out and you have to replace these tire uh, every you know at a particular frequency you know that um, you know uh, if not replaced then it can lead to many accidents so these treads which are given here can you see this 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 type of design is made on the tires to make it rough so that you know uh, the the contact surface between the tires and the road have sig uh, surfaces have significant roughness and because of that there will be significant friction and hence the vehicle will not skid so but then over a period of time it will get worn out because of that friction similarly here so the sole of the shoe you, you have to replace many a times there will be some some wear and tear some crack marks on the sole why because um, after a Continuous uses the friction will damage the sole, right? These again, these design are provided to make sure that enough roughness is there on the surface of the sole so that while walking you do not slip over. And this is something called, you know, this is brake pad. So you can see this is a brake pad used in cars to, you know, to uh, up, you know, to whenever you want to stop the vehicle, then you apply brakes, right? So what happens there again? We use the uh, concept of friction to you know where the brake pads rub against the wheel and because of that rubbing there will be a relative motion between the, th the two and the brake pads will oppose the motion of the wheel and hence thereby stopping the vehicle right so but again after continuous use this gets worn out okay so this is what we discussed about friction so what did we discuss again friction is a contact force it acts only when there is a relative motion between the two surfaces it depends on the surface roughness it depends on the normal acting between the two surfaces and it is responsible for wear and tear and friction uh, doesn't always oppose motion it yes definitely opposes relative motion but it actually also facilitates some motion right relative motion it will always oppose but the motion otherwise there are cases where friction has facilitated that for we saw that uh, example where walking is facilitated because of that um, uh, friction only and similarly the vehicles move on the on the road because of friction only so these are these are the cases where friction actually facilitates motion 
But if you see the relative motion of the tire or the sole with respect to the ground, it's always opposed. And because of that phenomena only, we are able to walk or we are able to drive a vehicle, right? So we will discuss all that in a separate topic under friction because we have to also study something called a coefficient of friction. We have to also study something called variety of friction. So there is something called static friction, kinetic friction, and to an extent we'll have to also study rolling friction. So all these are different types of frictions which are there, which we'll have to study. That will take up in a separate session.